Hey guys, welcome to the Work Awesome Podcast. This is the second episode where we are talking about questions to ask during an interview. Uh, today I sat down with Megan, Sarah, and Jean to go over some of the questions that they've seen during the interviewing process and really give some great insight from a recruiter or hiring manager perspective. If you find anything of really great value, please jump on one of my social media pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and share what that value is. It helps other people find it. Uh, it also will start to create more conversation on those pages which will allow the community to build. In the long run, that will help us get to know you guys and the questions that you want to have answered. I hope you really enjoy this podcast. I will see you guys on the other side. Welcome to the Work Awesome Podcast. Today's topic is questions to ask in an interview. Uh, on today's episode, we have Sarah, Jean, Megan, and myself um talking about the different kind of things that we found or they found uh during the interview process uh the big questions that you should be asking if you're the interviewee or the candidate looking for the job um and uh the best way to go about asking those questions so like i said before to the group. I do want to start with an icebreaker this time. Uh, this one is pretty relevant to the situation we're in now. So the question is, do you love working from home or, read, or would you rather be in the office? I'd say I'd rather be in the office. This is Gene. Uh, I'm, I'm a people person. Uh, I feel kind of isolated and I like the interaction with uh, everyone in the office. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely pick office for this. Um, I do like working at home. Uh, I have a nice setup, so that's always a plus, but I'm very distracted as well. So like I'll see something out of the corner of my eye and I have to like immediately go do it. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing for me working at home, I feel like uh, I'm more uh, prone to work all the time rather than between nine and five. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas at the office, it's like you're in this work mode at the office and then you can leave and be at home mode or, or whatever. Um, what about Megan, Sarah? I think I probably like coming in more just to get a little bit of adult time. I've been in the house with my two year old, so yeah. <laughs> it's been fun. I love being home with her, but it's definitely, I mean, I do think I get a good mix though. I get a lot done when I'm here because there's not people, you know, as a distraction too, it is kind of distracting being at work, but I do like socializing and being able to, to get in the office and see everybody. Right. I think I like a mix. I like, um, if I'm working on a project, it's easier for me to get that done at home because I just kind of shut myself in a door, but my kids are a lot older and they don't really want to interact with me a lot. <laughs> so that makes it a lot easier. Um, actually one time last, this past week, I came downstairs to get a drink and my son was like, oh mom, I didn't even know you were home. <laughs> so, so I kind of locked myself away. Um, but I do miss my work friends and um, and kind of seeing them uh, regularly and just kind of catching up with them, you know, not just on video calls. So I do miss that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us at HQ, um, Sarah and Megan both sit at HQ. I sit at HQ normally. Jean is up at our uh, Office of the Naval Research team. So you, you actually, Jean works in the uh, Office of the Naval Research building. Um, but at HQ, there's actually a lot of space to, uh, sit down and kind of get away from your, your regular desk if you want to do that focusing, which is really nice as well. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think, I think I would pick the office over the, um, my home office pretty much any day. Uh, the second part of that question is, I think we pretty much all answered it. Is there a balance between the two? And I think when you need to get away and really focus, um, it's nice to be able to lock yourself away to do that. And I think most of you guys would agree with that as well. Mm -hmm. The only exception to that is the uh, commute to O&R, which yeah, I have to go up and down 95. So that, <laughs> yeah. that, I don't miss that at all. Right. Yeah, definitely. That Virginia traffic, uh, it, for some reason, it's way worse in Virginia than it is in Maryland. I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, so getting into the topic of today's discussion, uh, questions to ask during an interview. Um, and myself, I'm kind of, uh, I can't think of the word, but um, 
I in the past have gone into interviews and not had questions prepared or not asked questions at the end. And as a kid right out of college, I could call myself a kid at that point, I think, right out of college, I didn't know to ask questions. I didn't know it was something that the interviewer was expecting from uh, the candidate or the interviewee. Uh, for you guys, if somebody comes in without any questions uh, prepared or without asking any questions toward the end, end of the interview, is that like an automatic turnoff for you guys? Is it something that stands out uh, as a negative? It is something that, that stands out. It's, it's not a, a deal breaker, but you wonder, you know, what the person is thinking about. Why have? Why is he not asking questions? Also, you, you, you wonder why he's not uh, asking about the company. You know, why hasn't he done those things? Yeah, I think, um, I don't think it's an automatic, like, disqualifying thing, but I do think that it shows the level of interest when people care to like not only do the research to know what kind of questions to ask, but just what are you getting yourself into? Where do you see yourself when it comes to this company? I do think that it is important that people ask questions because it shows your interest and in your investment in the company that you're potentially going into. Yeah, I agree with that, Megan and Jean. Um, I, I appreciate it when uh, and a candidate comes in and has a list of questions. And sometimes I've even seen people come in, they have the posting um, they've printed that out and they've actually highlighted questions and, you know, written little notes. And sometimes I've even noticed that they're checking things off during the interview, like, okay, that answers that, you know, that answers that question. And we do try to um, answer questions about what the job is like, what a what work life is at Avian and um, kind of what work environment you're going to be in. So if those questions are answered, that's great. But I do feel like, uh, like during the interview, um, other questions can come up as the conversation goes. I think most of our interviews at Avian are very conversational. So um, I typically start an interview and say, uh, you know, this is a conversation. We want to see if you're a fit for the position, but you also want to see if you're a, a fit for this environment as well. Um, you certainly don't want to accept a position that you're not going to feel comfortable with and you're not going to enjoy supporting. So, um, so it's really good for them to know, uh, the, you know, have the answers at the end. Um, and if they feel like along the way, they need to ask some questions or at the end, if they want to ask some questions and it's really, it really shows us that they care and that they really care about the fit. They're not just looking for, um, for a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Uh, so that kind of like goes into my next question in what kind of, what, I guess, what questions do you appreciate people asking? So Jean mentioned um, asking about the company uh, and, and things like that. Is there, are there questions that people have asked in the past that you just kind of like appreciate them asking, you like answering and kind of just educating them on, on either the company or something else? I do appreciate them asking about the company and, and it shows that uh, they've gone and done their homework. I, I appreciate when they go on and they've gone and looked at the uh, website and, and they know what they're talking about and they know what we do so that they're, they're more educated. I think the two biggest ones that I've found as a recruiter, but also just working closely with hiring managers that people enjoy is um, I like when people ask questions to give more detail about what their day to day is going to look like. Um, that not only is just kind of reading the job description, but it's really asking what am I going to be doing from a day to day basis? Who will I be working with? Those types of questions. And then a fun one that I always just liked, I always personally asked this during interviews was what the person likes about the company, like how long they care, what they enjoy about it. And I think that also just shows that you're kind of getting to know your teammates and the people who is interviewing you a little bit too, instead of specifically just about the job. So I like, I personally think those two are really, really good questions to ask. Yeah, I agree with that, Megan. Um, one of the other things I think is, is a good question to ask is, um, and I think Jean and I were actually just talking about this the other day. Um, you know, once you've kind of gone through and learned about the, um, the company, the position, um, what, what are the benefits that the company has to offer? If those aren't automatically presented to you during the interview, then that's an important factor to put into your decision whether 
that that position or that company is going to be something that is going to meet your needs. Mm-hmm. I agree with Sarah because sometimes they're only thinking about the bottom line salary mm-hmm. and not the, the total package. Yeah. And Avian is pretty heavy on culture. We like when people fit the culture that we already have. We also like when they bring new culture to us. Um, so doing that research and and asking questions about the company itself and the events that we have and all of that kind of stuff is always nice to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, have it, have there been questions in the past that might have caught you off guard, like um, a hard question for you to answer? This is kind of like a fun one to, to leak some information. So um, during one interview and uh, this person turned out to be a fabulous hire, uh, but um, I actually was practically sweating by the end of the interview because the questions were so, um, they were so like, yeah, they really wanted to make sure that they were taking a position that was going to be a position that was not just, you know, a short term position, which I thought was great because they'd be leaving a job um, that they currently had and maybe didn't necessarily mind, but we're looking for a new opportunity. Um, one of the, uh, and, and then in addition to that, they were really making sure, like, I kind of felt like um, they were making sure that the company was strong, that Avian was going to be around for a long time, that, you know, that there was actually going to be a place for them to work. Uh, so, um, so I actually, after the interview, I kind of did a little research to make sure that I was prepared better the next time for some of those questions about, um, you know, more in-depth questions about avian yeah so that's an interesting dynamic where like you as an interviewer are nervous instead of you would think it's the other way around Uh, well because i could tell that this candidate was going to be a great fit for avian and that um definitely was taking this as a very serious um opportunity Mm -hmm. Uh, and that that research that that person did i mean they were coming up with stuff on the website that i was like wow uh you pretty much memorized the information <laughs> that was on the website. <laughs> I mean, they knew how, like what contracts we were supporting, all of that. Um, so I could definitely tell that that person was going to really be committed to a job once they were hired. Right. Mm-hmm. I think a fun one that actually we, Jean and I recently got asked on an interview that threw me off and I didn't know how to answer it was, um, the candidate asked if he'll be working behind a gate, like what the security measures are going to be or something like that, because he was used, I think he was used to military life and he was just kind of mm-hmm. used to that. And it just threw me off because I was like, I've never even been to the ONR office. I don't even know what it looks like. I don't know anything about it. So I was like, yeah, this is something that I'm going to have to do more research on. Um, thankfully, Eugene knew the answer. But those types of like random one-off questions that aren't normal per se definitely kind of choke me up a little bit sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Anything from Eugene? Um, I like the question that uh, Megan was talking about as far as them asking questions about the job because the job title is not always the same as the job that you're doing. Right. Uh, for example, I, I advertise program analysts. Well, a program analyst in an acquisition program is completely different than what a program analyst does at O&R and s and in budget and finance. So I, I like them to, to ask what exactly they'd be doing in the position. Yeah, definitely. That's um, very particular for the defense contracting world where we have job titles, but that doesn't necessarily mean, like I was a program analyst or a junior program analyst when I first started at Avian, but I was doing communications work Mm -hmm. um, where another junior program analyst could have been doing, like you said, finance worker or some other type of work. so yeah, definitely some interesting things. And I think when we do get, as as the interviewers get caught off guard, it kind of just shows that we, we're human too. Uh, like a lot mm-hmm. of people will come into a job and be, or a job interview and be super nervous. Um, mm-hmm. But to see that Sarah's nervous when she's actually be, do, <laughs> the one being, or the one doing the interviewing mm-hmm. uh, just shows our human side, which is not a bad thing at all. Well, just like you used an icebreaker, my icebreakers, I always ask a person where they're from, you know, and then most of the time I've been there and I can talk about, you know, things in their area or or their part of the world that then puts them at ease and then they go on. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, The next question I have for you guys, uh, 
again, kind of like a um, scenario, if the interviewee, so the candidate that you're interviewing, uh, doesn't have any questions on the day of, but then follows up with you via email or phone with uh, questions that popped into their head, or maybe they had to like think about it afterwards. Is that okay? Is that um, something that you'd be kind of, uh, that you think is a positive thing coming out of an interview? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the only thing that I would caveat that with is that um, Absolutely. I mean, that's and that's one of the things I typically say is, hey, you know, I realize that as soon as you leave this building, you know, 10 new questions are going to pop into your head. So please feel free to reach out, um, especially if they're when we've gone over benefits at the end, they might need to take that home and kind of ask if they have a family and ask you know, some more questions, which I encourage that as well. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that when you're in the room with the recruiter and the hiring manager, then the, the answers are pretty immediate. Uh, if someone emails me a question that I don't have the answer to, it might take me a bit of time to get that answer, but I definitely would work to get that answer as soon as I could. Yeah, I do think it's a good thing. And like Sarah said, it, it gives you an opportunity to go home and talk to your significant other or your family or whatever the case may be to figure out as a dynamic if it works for you. So I think more questions kind of come up than when you're just sitting there. I think during my interview, I don't even know if I had many, you know, many questions. I think there was a couple, but there wasn't too much because it sounded like something I felt comfortable doing, you know, so in the moment there wasn't a lot, but I probably bothered Sarah afterwards and it didn't, it didn't bother her. So I think it's perfectly normal and we're, we're used to it. I think as recruiters, we get that very often. It's a normal, normal thing. I think it's very good. And then it also, uh, it reminds you of the person, you know, because you go on to other things and all of a sudden it's calling back and say, hey, I've got some question. Oh, yeah, that's so and so. I remember him now. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, so it definitely helps you stand out. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome because uh, there are, like I mentioned at the beginning, times where I didn't realize I needed to ask questions. And then I would talk to somebody after an interview and be like, so did you ask questions? I'd be like, no, I was supposed to. And so I, I would, I'd follow up and, and ask those questions. Uh, and as Jean said, it helps you stand out and uh, kind of stay in the front of the interviewer's mind, which is always good. Right. And one of the things, I mean, I mentioned one of um, my suggestions would be to go through and you know, look at the original job post mm -hmm. and uh, generate some questions that way if you don't have any that come up to mind. Um, and it's okay to take a note, notepad or something like that. Actually, I encourage it into the interview because um, then while the person is talking, while the interviewer is talking, you can jot down your questions as they come up. Um, maybe some of those questions that you wrote wrote down prior to the interview are answered, but maybe some new ones are generated during the interview. Yep. And then the last question I have for you guys, um, should an interviewee, so this is kind of like timing during an interview, should an interviewee or a candidate ask questions throughout the interview or should they wait until the end when the normal thing that an interviewer will ask is, do you have any questions to ask me? Um, so should they wait for that time or should they just get it all out during the interview? I think that's a, a mixture. I think that's a hard question um, because from our standpoint as a recruiter, we know how every manager works. So there's some different managers who are okay with asking questions and there's other ones who would rather you probably wait to the end. Um, but honestly, the way most interviews have, go is we really just kind of tell you about the job. Do you have any questions about the job description? And now walk us through your experience, things like that. So I think that there is always space in between to be able to leave room for a question. Um, I think like maybe the question about what do you like personally about the job, maybe that should wait to the end just because that's like mm -hmm. a, a question for another person. But if it's specific to the job, I don't think there's anything wrong with kind of just breaking in there when you have the chance to ask the question, especially when it's fresh and in your mind, because you're taking in a lot of information. So you don't want to forget your question by the end of it. Right. And like Sarah said, um, these interviews are meant to be like conversational. So yeah. I think being able to ask those questions during the interview uh, just makes it feel even more like a conversation. What about... Um, I had a point to this. What about, oh, if you ask all your questions during the interview and then you get to the end and the interviewer asks, 
do you have any questions, but you've already asked all your questions. Should, is that, does that make That's sense totally to you guys? Fine. Yep. Totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the way I look at an interview is more as a conversation. I mean, this is, this is a time when um, the interviewee and the interviewers have all cleared their calendar and this is their time to have a conversation. So, um, you know, the interviewee should probably be the one, should be the one doing most of the conversing um, while they're asking a question. And even if maybe a question is asked and you pause for a minute and you're not quite sure what the question really was, um, you can say, you can either repeat it back or ask it to be repeated, for the question to be repeated um, to you as well. Um, so I, I do think that um, that if you're asking questions along the way, the interviewer is going to pick up on that. And that's totally not a problem. And that really means that you're very engaged in the interview. Yeah. yeah. And then you can just get to the end. And if they ask, say, you answered all my questions, and, you know, I don't have anything else right now. But if I think of anything else, I'll shoot you an email, give you a call. And that happens. Often. Yep. It keeps the flow of the conversation going and keeps everybody involved without a lot of dead space. You don't want that because then people get nervous. And then... mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, the, and my thought process, too, is that it, generally speaking, depending upon the questions, of course, but well, if their questions are being asked during the interview, then it's more apparent whether the interviewee really is understanding the position and um, some of some of the kind of their familiarity with the work can really come up because they're thinking of questions that you're like, wow, they really do understand this concept. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I have for you guys. Is there anything else on this topic that you can think of that you want to share? We talked about, um, I think the most important thing is to be prepared, do your research, um, have questions ready, uh, keep a conversation in mind because really this is just a conversation between two people. The interviewer might be as nervous as the interviewee um, depending on the situation. So uh, it's, it's just a conversation and it's not anything to be uh, really super overworked up about. What I would like to add is uh, besides the having your questions ready, I do something that our owner, our president really believes in is that 30 second, uh, elevator speech yeah. have that ready in your back pocket to be able to uh give that at any time you know if things get really bogged down and he said well what do you do what do you think about yourself and you give that 30 second elevator speech and bam you're you're in there yeah definitely anything else sarah or megan i don't think so i think we covered a lot i mean the big thing is that when you leave an interview you want to be sure that you understand the position as i think we talked about earlier and that you are comfortable with your knowledge of the company and that you're comfortable with the benefits or the total compensation kind of options that are available as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think if that's everything, um, we did put an article together that has seven standard questions that an interviewee could consider asking during an interview process. So I'll link that. Um, in the description of this video or this podcast uh, so that you can check it out and be prepared for your next interview. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me, Jean, Sarah, Megan. Thank you. Uh, and on the next episode of the Work Awesome Podcast, we're talking about interview don'ts. So things, common mistakes that people make um, that they really probably shouldn't uh, during during the interview process. So again, thank you guys for joining me and I will talk to everybody later. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Ian. I hope you guys enjoy that podcast. Again, if you found something of really great value, jump on one of my social media pages, comment what that value is, even leave a timestamp if you're on YouTube so that other people can find it and we can start growing this really great community. If you're not following me on social media, it's pretty much the same on all platforms, Ian Wolbert on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, on LinkedIn. Again, you just have to search for Ian Wolbert and you can connect with me on there. Uh, we are also starting an email list in all the descriptions for these videos. You can sign up for that email list and receive great information about all of these topics that we're going over. If you just want more, if you want to read about these topics, I have articles on LinkedIn, Medium that I'm posting so that if you prefer reading about these topics, they're there for you as well. Thank you again for listening and I'll see you again next week for the Work Awesome Podcast. 
The Work Awesome Podcast is brought to you by Avian. Avian is a 49% employee-owned company founded by retired U.S. Navy test pilots who believe passion and talent are the right traits to get the job done. Avian operates in a culture that thrives on innovation, creativity, and the entrepreneurial spirit. Instead of offering services through mere business transactions, Avian is redefining the government services industry by creating meaningful experiences and connecting talented people with important work. The passion that Avian's employees have for its work builds better partnerships for the future, and Avian's unique talents create real solutions. At Avian, Avian, we move fast, take risks, and don't settle for the status quo. To learn more, visit Avian's website at avian.com. That's A-V-I-A-N.com.